well, if nobody controls the web, there's not any one organization or individual who created the web and said, hey, here's the web. Where do we go for documentation? Where's the best documentation for the web? When you learn how to program in a certain language or a certain style, there's always going to be a definitive and best source for documentation. And on the web, <laughs> it's no different. And that definitive and best source for documentation is the Mozilla Developer Network. Mozilla Developers Network. So when you're searching for something on the web, often you just go straight to Google and you type MDN and then article, right? Or MDN section or MDN flexbox. And then you look at what MDN has to say about that HTML or that CSS. So that's the first stop. When I'm looking for documentation, I, uh, that's how I do it. I Google just like that, MDN and something else. So for instance, and I think I've showed this once before, I might type in MDN section or MD, MDN header, right, to see what does MDN have to say about the header element. Uh, and that's how I do it. So that's the first place you go for documentation is MDN. The next place, which isn't really a place I go to at all, but it looks promising and it might become something in the future, and I just want to put it on your radar, is webplatform.org. So webplatform.org is a collaboration of many people from the W3C who they put together the web, web standards, right? And they're the stewards. And it's companies like Google, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Adobe, right? So that, those are pretty huge companies. So keep your eye on webplatform.org. Mozilla is the exact same one for a Mozilla Developers Network, right? MDN. So uh, this might become the go-to spot in the future. So far, I still just hit MDN. The W3 schools. So this can also be helpful, like when you just Google and you get results and you look at the results, you'll, see, you'll often see results from W3 schools. But the W3 schools are not affiliated with the W3C. It's just some guys who created a website and thought, let's confuse people and we'll get ad revenue. I mentioned this already, right? But the W3 schools... Sometimes they're good and sometimes they're completely incorrect. <laughs> so I just made up my own statistic and said 14% of the time they're incorrect. So I totally use them, but I also take them with a grain of salt. And I'll, I'll double check you know, stuff sometimes if it doesn't make sense. All right, so Can I Use is also a really wonderful resource that which we'll be using throughout this course. And you'll see how it gets used in this course. So I just want to put it on your radar right now that this is another one of the documentation sources that we go to when we're building websites. Stack Overflow is also another really good and reliable documentation source. So you could go there and read answers to questions that other people have posted, and you could post your own questions, and then really experienced developers can answer them and give their input. So that's another really good source. CodePen.io. I really like CodePen.io for sharing code with others or for going and getting ideas about how I might build something. You might go to CodePen.io. You already saw me using it a little bit. You might go to CodePen.io and search for Misty Background Experiment because that's a really cool page with just HTML and CSS. And you could see some of it right there, but I really uh, like that for getting ideas. CSS Tricks is another go-to source for you know learning about the web, and uh, they have good articles. And we're going to use CSS Tricks article by Chris Coyer. He's like a legend in the web programming community. We're going to we're going to use his article on Flexbox for learning Flexbox ourselves. So that's another good source. And then the web ahead. I've already pointed this out in the resources. But the web ahead is a great podcast for uh, continuing to stay current with the web and hear other people's thoughts who are developers for creating websites and building websites. The web ahead is a great resource. So the main thing we go to for documentation is MDN, right? That's the main one that we do. And, uh, and then we just put in whatever we're Googling. And, uh, and then these other ones are also useful in slightly different ways. Caniuse.com is also super useful. So um, that's a little bit about web documentation.